May, may I invite Dr. D.K. Hazra to speak on preventing aging to prevent heart disease. In today's uh, panoply of talks related to imaging, uh, I think I was extremely impressed by Professor Manjanda, who spoke about the use of yoga as a low-cost preventive intervention. So what I plan to do today, basically, if one can prevent a condition is inherently better than simply treating it. We are forced to treat when we can't prevent. Coming from Agra and from the Messier Medical Agra, I just like to point out that anti-aging is a relatively powerful modality. The old alchemist grail, it said, look for three things. The philosopher's stone, transmuting base metals to gold, the universal solvent and the elixir of life conferring immortality. The Hindu Sagaramanthan drama describes the struggle between the Devas and the Asuras for possessing the Amrit brought forth by churning the ocean. So it's an ancient goal. Now this will focus on current scientific developments in Homo sapiens quest for defying aging, not merely adding years to life, but equally important, adding life to years. And in particular, discuss anti-aging strategies for preventing heart disease. Now if you look at the links of the aging process, whether it is heart disease, whether it is cancer, whether it is Alzheimer, or whether it is aging, we know they are all linked through reactive oxygen species, free radicals, and inflammation. So anything which hits the last three things, the free radicals, the inflammation, is going to benefit us in all the concepts. Now, there's today a concept that we know that the frequency of all CVD, diabetes, Alzheimer's and cancers <coughs> dramatically goes up between the age of 35 and 85 years. So if one can prevent the process, then one not only improves the length of life, but also increases the healthy period of life, what is called the health span. So our aim is not merely to increase total life longevity, but also to improve the healthy part of human existence. There are multiple theories of aging, free radical theories, oxidative alterations in collagen, elastin, and DNA, cellular aging, telomere shortening, apoptosis, error theory, immune theory, and autophagy. The role in aging prevention has been highlighted by the Nobel Prize of 2016. So what can one do to intervene in these? What are the very well indicated methods and what are the uh, new things in which people are trying to look at? Calorific restriction, resveratrol, rapamycin and mTOR inhibition, telomere engineering, the clotho gene, plucking gray hair concept, de-stressing in which of course yoga contributes a lot, diet and exercise, these are all aspects which can, can look at. First of all, of course, cutting calorific intake. It increases lifespan. It has been shown in many species, from platforms to fruit flies to astronauts and time capsules. Periodic fasting and very low calorie diets cause remissions in diabetes equivalent to bariatric surgery. The ancient yogis had frugal diets. Resveratrol from red wine and rapamycin, the mTOR inhibitor restricting cell growth, are believed to imitate cellular restriction without the pain of fasting. Today, in addition to calorie restriction, there's a lot of interest in intermittent fasting. There are various strategies, alternate day fasting, the 5 to 2 diet, fasting two days out of the week with as much as 500 calories eaten on each of the two fasting days. Intermittent fasting, eating only in a window. That means eating, say, perhaps for eight hours in a day of 24 hours somewhat analogous to the Jain lifestyle. Dietary manipulation seems to be very, very important. The blue zone communities of long-lived centenarians such as Okinawa, Georgia and Gilgit suggest 
that yogurt, still bread and fruits were beneficial. Multiple recent analyses have shown that the Mediterranean, largely vegetarian diet with olive oil, fruits, berries and vegetables confers a 30% lower risk of heart attacks. By contrast, the high fructose syrup based diets, processed foods and high proteins which stimulate IGF-1 shorten life. Avocados, colored foods, capsicum, tomatoes, berries, sprouts, greens are the color code for anti-aging. One needs to avoid environmental stressors. Reference has already been made to tobacco, the captain of the men of death, ionizing radiation, unnecessary x-rays or CT scans, a proposed the previous debate, one would always choose a magnetic resonance or an ultrasound investigation preferentially rather than an ionizing investigation. Extremes of heat and cold, chemicals, pollutants, pesticides, plastics, dioxins, food contaminants, psychological stress. The ancient, uh, I'll say the medieval Hindu philosopher Kabir Saab spoke of Rukhi Suki Khai Ke Thanda Pani Pi. Learn to be contented, not eternally keeping up with the neighbors. Working ahead of deadlines, exams, income tax returns, stations and airports should be reached well in time. Reducing environmental degradation, Swachhata campaigns, using clean green energy from the sun and wind power. Now, these are all things which are important in reducing stress. Now, what are the interventions which, have been, which are being tried out? One is the very low calorie diets. Roy Taylor in the UK and at UCLA, the, uh, the RFO program have looked at low calorie diets below 800 calories per day for, and they say that they give the same benefits as total starvation. The telomere engineering has been a hope for a long time because we know that with growth, the chromosomes shorten at the end of the telomeres and telomeres pro can prolong these telomeres. However, telomeres is also enhanced in cancers and therefore this is one area which molecular biologists have been reluctant to touch. However, we are now aware of a gene, clotho, which codes for a glucuronidase and this clotho gene, the KL gene, it increases lifespan in mice by 30%. Now it turns out that 20% of humans have a clotho variant that extends lifespan by four years. In the era of CRISPR, can, can gene editing prolong and increase beneficial genes such as the KL variant? Yes, possible in the future, but it's going to be expensive. A low cost intervention, which is on the way in the States is STEM targeting aging with metformin. This is, Nick Bazalai believes that using metformin will delay the onset of age-related diseases, including cancer, cardiovascular disease, and Alzheimer's, and prolong the healthy lifespan. Metformin is inexpensive and has got many uses. Decreases insulin levels, inhibits mTOR, it reduces the endogenous production of reactive oxygen species, and it activates AMP kinase, reduces DNA damage, reduces inflammation, enhances autophagy, retards cellular senescence, and most important today, we were just, just discussing with Dr. Manchanda, it also helps to alter the microbiome. It has been shown that giving metformin to he elegance, it changes the microbial folate and methionine metabolism, and this could also be a useful intervention in changing a harmful microbiome to a healthy microbiome. There are many actions are summarized in this cartoon. So it suffices to say that there is a rationale for these metformin studies. It is an FDA approved drug in the US and in India for much longer than that time, since the 1970s. It has been shown to be associated with longevity in many rodent models. It even extends the lifespan of nematodes, suggesting that the metformin mechanisms are evolutionarily conserved 
and are not related simply to reducing hyperglycemia. It reduces oxidative stress inflammation and extends both lifespan and, and health span in mouse models. And in the UK PDA study, which we have all studied, metformin, as compared with other anti-diabetes drugs, decreased cardiovascular disease. There are molecular biological studies that's going on, such as called MILES, metformin in longevity study. Here they are looking at the number of expressed genes in muscle and adipose tissue in subjects before and after giving metformin. They are looking at the gene expression in these tissues, both with metformin and with placebo. However, the results of this study are still not available. What are future horizons? Vitamin D supplementation, the panacea for so many conditions touted. It may prevent diabetes, it may prevent the metabolic syndrome, conceivably it may slow aging. Inhibiting cortisol synthesis and hippocampal damage is extremely important. Cortisol synthesis from pro-cortisol is increased during stress. And this again emphasizes the importance of de-stressing and Dr. Manchinder just told you about how enhancing concentration to yoga is one powerful method of de-stressing. And he sh showed you a number of studies showing the multiple beneficial effects of such yoga. In a lighter vein, staying married and monogamous has been shown to enhance the arrival after heart attacks. And it has also been shown that poor malicious quality <coughs> enhances inflammatory gene activity at the epigenetic level. You may be having bad genes, but at the epigenetic level, you can deactivate them by histones and by methionine and, the, and by methylation. And this is one thing which is important, therefore, that you are not firmly, irrevocably committed to a certain course by your genes. There is room for alteration at the epigenetic level. Finally, an acute cardiomyopathy, broken heart syndrome, is now well recognized. And therefore, one feels that in the long run, it is going to be very cost effective to prevent aging and its consequences. But this involves not only imagination, determination, bench work, epidemiology, as well as clinical studies. And I again refer to the open essay exhortation translated by Swami Vivekananda, awake, arise and stop not until the goal is reached. Thank you. As I said, in the Albert Einstein College, what they are using is they are looking at the RNA messengers which are generated, but they have not measured the telomere length. And as you pointed out quite rightly, it would be a useful thing to do, and it and and and, and it and and it is doable. Yes. The only problem, of course, with the, the telomere concept is that cancers also have uh, a long telomere. Yes. I thought I'll let you know. Three <laughs> studies by one by Dean Ornish and uh, the Nobel laureate, and two from All India Institute. They should tell you the length is improved. That's very really important. Yeah. So maybe now I'll request the chairperson to present a memento and certificate to Dr. D.K. Hazra.